We're just going to look at how to set up a, a metaball type animation or scene uh, and we're just going to do something really simple just to show how the process works. So I'm going to create a, a cube, there it is there, and I'm going to create a sphere and I'm just going to use the default cube and sphere, I'm not going to change anything for now and I'm just going to move them apart um, and these are going to be the objects that I use for this um, metaballs uh, process. So all I need to do to make these um, sort of blobby type objects is to go to my create menu and um, under modeling we've got this function metaball. So when we create that here it is listed in our objects list and all we need to do is drag and drop the objects that we want to blob together, drag and drop them into the metaball. So if I select both of these two, the sphere and the cube, drag and drop them into the metaball and what you should see if you've moved them apart um, is uh, something maybe similar to what I've got. Where it really gets interesting is if you grab one of the objects and start to move it around. Now what's important about setting up a, a, a metaball type animation is the amount of points or the vertices that each object has. I'm just going to turn off my metaball for a second and have a look at these objects. If I go to my display menu and turn on this Garou shading with lines, I can see all the divisions of my primitive objects. My sphere has a whole bunch of divisions. My cube doesn't really. All it's got is a vertex at each point. It doesn't have any extra divisions. If I put more divisions into it, so I can select my cube, go into its object tab and just add some more segments into it. Now we're getting some more divisions. So I'll just turn these all up to, let's just try four for a start. And this is where you want to be a little bit careful. Don't these turn these up too high just yet. If you turn them up really high, your computer will really start to slow down. If I turn back on my metaballs, now we can see we're actually getting this kind of blobby thing go on. And if I grab one of the objects from my list and move it side to side, you can see as they get close to each other, they blob into each other. So what's really important with this metaball type animation is the amount of divisions in each object that's involved. Uh, if they have lots of divisions, you'll get a nice smooth blobby kind of interaction. If they don't have many divisions, you'll get some quite odd and unusual things. The other thing that's really important about this um, metaball function is if you select the metaball itself and have a look at its um, attributes, in the object tab, we've got two settings that are really important. The editor subdivision and the render subdivision. That is how smooth is the surface. Uh, and it's measured in centimetres, how far apart um, in these um, measurement units does it sort of subdivide the surface and make it smooth. In the viewport, when we're often working, we want things to work really quickly and easily. So the, the subdivision value is um, is large, which means that you'll get coarse subdivisions across the surface. If you reduce this to maybe about half that value, so maybe 20 centimetres, you should see you'll get probably about double the amount of smoothness. And so we're getting a much smoother kind of effect. What these two attributes mean is in the viewport you see one level of smoothness. When you actually hit the render button, you'll get something even smoother than that. What you have to be careful of is that the, the lowest, lower the subdivision number is, the more divided the shape will be and the longer it will take for your computer to calculate that kind of blobbiness. So be very careful of setting either of those numbers too low because it's pretty easy to cripple your machine, especially if you've got a whole bunch of objects involved in this um, sort of simulation, in this metaball kind of uh, effect. Now you can add as many objects as you want to into that metaball. So if you want to, you can put other objects in there and add it into the metaball. And then the more that you start to add in, the more you'll start to see that things ooh, get a little bit slow and they start to change. And the other option that we've got in this metaball system is the radius. And as we start to decrease the radius, 
Um, uh, it's changing how the objects interact depending on how far apart they are. Um, I'm just trying to see which way around it goes here. So I think the idea is the larger the radius, the sooner objects start to interact with each other as you bring them closer or further away from each other. So the great thing about um, this metaball system is that you can have any combination of objects. You can have MoGraph uh, cloners, you can have all sorts of things uh, happening in your scene. And then once you've animated those, you can drop the whole system into a metaball function and you'll get this really blobby, um, organic effect happening with, um, with whatever objects you've got in your scene. So as I said before, this metaball effect, it's super easy to set up. But uh, I mean, I can see I've only got three objects in my scene here. I do have my settings set up reasonably high resolution uh, and things are already getting pretty slow. So do be very careful about how you use this um, because it can really cripple your machine if you set things uh, too high. 